Hey guys, welcome to part two of my series on how to make real riders at home. The focus in this video will be tires. You might think that making rubber tires would be the most difficult part of the project. If so, allow me to alleviate your anxiety on the subject. Rubber tire production is by far the most easy part of the build. What you're looking at right now is 30 feet of quarter inch vinyl tubing used in sprinkler systems. You can buy this at any hardware store for about seven bucks. This price fits our price goal, that is to keep each wheel costing only a couple cents. The cutters are also from the hardware store and cost about 13 bucks. Good cutters make good tires, so I recommend these. However, other alternatives could also be found, I'm sure. Let's get started. Cutting the tubing is pretty self-explanatory. Place a part of the roll in the cutter and cut off a small piece the width of the wheel. Do be sure that you cut slow so you can get as even a cut as possible. The first thing you'll notice after you cut off a small piece and compare it to the wheel is that it has about the same diameter. If you attempt to use your fingers to stretch it, you'll find that it is quite rigid. Fear not, there's a simple trick we're going to use to make it pliable. The simple trick of course is heat, in this case the heat from boiling water. I'm going to boil water in a beaker here so you can see it and the part going in it, but any container will do. Once the water has started to boil, just drop in the tire, or all four tires in the water if you like. The heat will soften the vinyl, allowing us to stretch it. You need only wait a few seconds. Use some long tweezers to pull out the part. Then using some small scissors, place the scissors into the tire and open the scissors up. Then release the tension and move the tire and repeat. This is a stretching process we're going to use to enlarge the circumference of the tire. Usually the first stretching round is not enough, so the scissors and the tire are both placed in the boiling water to re-soften the vinyl. The stretching is done again, and if the vinyl feels like it has a circumference large enough to go on the wheel, then you can attempt to put it on. If not, place it back in the water and try again. If you are unable to get the tire on in, say, 10 seconds, you need to give up and place the tire back in the water. The vinyl shrinks as it cools, so the longer you let it cool, the harder it will be to get on the rim. With patience and practice, you'll get the hang of it and be able to get them on in the first or second try. At this point, you need to move the tire around until you like the alignment. Then, using your tweezers, grab the wheel and submerge it into the boiling water for a few seconds. This last submersion will set the vinyl by removing all the stresses we put into it with all the stretching we did earlier. Once removed, the vinyl will again cool and shrink around the rim. The wheel is now done. Vinyl feels very much like hard rubber, sort of like the rubber tires on Johnny Lightning wheels. At this point I have no method for putting tread on the tires, and I'm not sure I'm even going to go that far. So for now all the wheels will be sporting slicks. Some of the tubing has writing on it. You can take this off with acetone, but be careful as you can also melt the vinyl. This method of putting tires on has other cool aspects. For example, you know what would make the Ratify even more rad? If it had rubber tires. Nah, I'm just showing you this to give you an idea of how versatile and how much you can stretch this stuff if you want to. The back tires are about as big as Mattel makes. I will note that you do need to cut them a little bit wider than you would normally think because the width will shrink as the tire gets stretched out that much. Anyway, I'm working on the next segment in this series. We'll get it out ASAP. Thanks for watching.